question for you. Um, what is your definition of religion? When, when I use the word religion, I think what I mean is beliefs that are based not upon evidence, but upon faith, revelation, tradition, authority, that kind of thing. So, um, obviously, classic examples of religions are Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Um, Hinduism is another classic example of a religion. So are the uh, polytheisms of the ancient Greeks and Romans, the polytheism of the, of the Norsemen. Um, Buddhism is more difficult because at least some versions of Buddhism seem to be non-supernatural. Um, I, I'd be inclined not to use the word religion for non-supernatural beliefs. I'd be inclined to use it for um, supernatural beliefs, which are not based upon evidence, but are based upon f faith. So if you are starting, you're saying that it starts from something that's extraordinarily minute or something that's very simplistic, but yet that still hasn't been proven what that initial thing is. Does that not require that there's some level of faith that you must have in order to believe that that ultimately will be discovered? Well, what do you think? I, in a sense, that's right. Um, and there's a, 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 there is a meaning of the word faith, which, which is of the form, I believe that given enough time, humanity will discover something. One can have faith say that, um, um, I believe that humans will one day stand on Mars. Um, and that's kind of a different meaning of the word faith. That's saying, uh, I have faith that the human species is enterprising and if there's a challenge, sooner or later somebody will, will meet it. In that, sen <coughs> In that sense of faith, uh, yes, I have faith that humans will one day solve the riddle of the origin of life. That's a different kind of faith from saying, I have faith that um, Jesus was born of a virgin. There's no evidence that Jesus was born of a virgin. So the reason people believe it is pure faith. That they, are, they either they have a kind of internal revelation that it's true, or they were told that it's true by their parents or by their, by their school teachers. It's a different kind of faith. I'm a communication studies major, and it is very important to us to know our audience. Um, that's always pounded in our head when we write or we speak or whatever. When you were writing this book, was is your audience people that agree with you, or are you trying to, I guess, show them the light, or, or trying to um, under help them understand this perspective? I mean, that's a or fascinating. Kind of yeah, that, that's a. I, I mean, Unlike you, I, I haven't really consciously thought very hard about that. But, um, <laughs> but with hindsight, uh, I, I can probably cobble something together. <laughs> I think there really is... When, when one holds views which are controversial and unpopular in certain circles, it's a very real dilemma whether you are trying to convert the people who disagree with you, uh, or whether you're trying to um, sway people who are sort of wavering on the fence, or even whether you're trying to stiffen the sinews and summon up the blood of... Anyone know where that comes from? Henry V, isn't it? <laughs> um, uh, of the people who do agree with you, but maybe a little bit maybe intimidated from articulating it. So there are kind of three possible audiences, the people who, who disagree and need to be converted, the people who are on the fence and need to be pushed over the fence one way rather than the other, and the people who agree with you but uh, are demoralized, intimidated, frightened. Um, I know that when it comes to, to atheism, there are in the United States of America lots and lots of people who are atheists but are too frightened to say so. And when I'm writing an advocacy of atheism, which I frequently do, very often those are the people that I'm, that I'm talking to. I'm saying, in effect, what, the, what the, the gay pride people said, come out, don't be afraid to come out. Um, uh, there are lots more like you. 
but they're all too frightened to say so. That, that doesn't happen in this country. Nobody's frightened of being an atheist here. They are frightened of being atheists, at least in certain parts of the United States of America. So that's part of an audience which, with hindsight, I, I realize I may have been trying to, um, to reach. Um, yeah, okay, I think that's quite fine.